Hey everyone and welcome back to the JKW Woodworks channel. Today we have a fun and unique build. It's a chessboard and we're going to be using some pallet wood and epoxy to make it. This is a very easy yet fun project to make and we hope that you enjoy the video. Today's video is going to be on the chessboard itself, not the chess pieces. The chess pieces I purchased off of Amazon, they're handcrafted wooden chess pieces. And I'll put the link in the description below. So today we're going to start off with some pallet wood. And I recently got lucky and got some great pallets. And what I mean by that is I got pallets that actually have decent wood that wasn't cracked, old, and providing me with some very useful material. So these next couple clips is going to be me processing the pallet wood, planing it down, cutting down the strips into size and ripping them into squares. So right here you're going to notice I had a lot of kickback when I was taking those strips and cutting them down to squares. This is very dangerous as you can see those squares go flying very quickly. So I added my Ryobi kickback guard, which I never really used, but in this build, it saved the day. And as you can see, I had no kickback at all. So right here is an example of what I got after using the kickback guard. As you can see, these squares are very clean cut, no issues, compared to the other squares which sometimes got deformed, especially when they got thrown and got kicked back. Now I'm going to take the squares that I cut and I'm going to glue them onto the plywood. I'm going to be using a spare square in between each one just to give me the correct spacing. And this is what it looks like when it's all said and done. So let's let the glue dry and then we'll get on to the next step. Now that the glue is dried, I'm taking the plywood to the table saw and I'm just going to cut it down to size. And I have some spare plywood, so I'm going to be cutting those down into strips. The reason I'm doing that is I'm going to use it as kind of like a wall or a barrier for when I pour the epoxy. So right here I'm going to be gluing on those strips with some wood glue. I made sure that I used a lot of wood glue, that way I had a good squeeze out. That way I knew everything is sealed and it's ready for the epoxy pour.
Now we're on to an epoxy pour. I like to use liquid glass deep pour epoxy. This epoxy is supposed to go up to four inches on a pour and it takes approximately three to four days to cure and harden. Now that's a long time, but that allows a lot of the bubbles to escape and rise to the top and allows me to do some cool texturing and patterning with the epoxy. When it comes to epoxy pours, you really want to make sure that you seal your wood prior to pouring. This makes sure that everything is sealed and that no epoxy will slip through the cracks. It also will seal the wood, that way your wood doesn't absorb the epoxy itself. Epoxy is very expensive, so you want to make sure you do it right, because a little mistake or a little error can cost you a lot of money. And when everything's all said and done, this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to let it cure in a nice contained area where it's level. And in case anything happens, it's not going to make a big mess. Now we're going to go on to the epoxy pour itself. For this pour, I'm going to be using Battleship Gray, Pure Gold, and Liquid Metal Pigments. I really enjoy using epoxy in my wood shop. It's one of those things that I think adds a lot to my products and makes it very unique. Epoxy is a lot of fun to work with, but it takes time and it takes a lot of practice and every pour you get better and better at it. The main takeaways that I get from epoxy is to make sure that it's mixed thoroughly, that it's mixed correctly with the correct ratio, and that you use a heat gun or torch to remove the bubbles afterwards. And this is what it looks like after a couple days and it's cured. I had a little bit of a spillover, but I think that was just overfill. Nothing really slipped through the cracks. So overall, a success. Now I'm going to use my planer just to make everything flat and level. As you can see, those plywood walls that I set really got torn up in the planer, so I have to remove them. I'm going to be using the table saw just to cut it down little by little. I wanted to give the chessboard a good border, so I'm going to be using some 2x4s that I'm going to glue on as that border. After the glue's dried and I've filled all the cracks, I'm on to the sanding process. I'm going to start out 80 grit, 
go to 120, 180, and then finish with 220. And in between each grit, I'm gonna be water popping because I really want this texture to be smooth and soft on the top. I decided to give the board a quarter inch round over and using my iron burn my logo on the back of the board. And I'm going to use some mineral spirit to clean up the board and prep it for staining and finish. So after the thing was all said and done, the pigment came up more black than gray. So I decided to do a classic black stain on the border. I'm also going to be staining the back side as well. And for the finish, I'm going to be using some shellac. And I'm going to be doing three coats on both the top and bottom of the board itself. And let's look at the finished product. On the bottom side, my logo didn't turn out as well as I wanted it to. Got covered up by the stain a little bit. 
but that's okay because we're going to be focusing on the top side. And I'm really happy with how the top side turned out. As you can see, I took some time to put some swirls in the epoxy while it was curing, and those really stand out now. I'm really happy in how this board turned out, and I'm really happy with the epoxy itself. The epoxy kind of gave it a marble kind of look or effect, which I thought was really cool and unique. Thank you for watching this video. And if you made it this far in the video, then you've obviously enjoyed the video and you like this content, so please hit that like and subscribe button so we can help spread this content to more people. We appreciate all the support we get from you. And let us know in the comments below if you enjoyed this build. Until the next build, thank you.